Chances are, if you've lived on the Central Coast for longer than six months, you have seen a real estate sign with the name Hal on it. How do you say that last name? It's Swayze. But he doesn't come and go like the wind. His true passion is the Central Coast. This place is amazing. You've got unbelievable climate. You've got beaches. You've got mountains. You have very little traffic. You've got great schools. You've got a phenomenal university. You've got wineries. I mean, what, what am I missing? I mean, you guys all live here. I mean, the ocean. On. Yeah, ocean with not 60 million people like in yeah. Southern California. Right. They have all the things that we don't. Smog. Don't want. Traffic. Yeah, you yeah know. exactly. Crime. In this podcast, you'll meet the members of Team Swayze and find out what makes Slow County one of the most desired real estate markets in the United States. You'll also learn how Hal learned from his past as a member of an NCAA championship tennis team and applies his successes and failures to making Team Swayze's clients get the most out of Slow County real estate. As a team, the coach said, hey, our number one player doesn't show up on time, disrespects people, you know, just not a good example. I'm going to put you as the team. Do you, you want him to continue on the team? And we voted him off the team. And later I found out the assistant coach and the coach goes, well, there goes our chance at nationals. We put core values to work there. And then we ended up winning the NCAA championship because everybody stepped up. And it's interesting how one person that's not a fit can change the dynamic. So you see that in sports all the time. And it's fun when you can put together a great team like we have here. The Slow County Real Estate Podcast with Hal Swayze. On this episode, Hal is joined by Team Swayze members, James and JT and Keller Williams Central Coast CEO, Jay Pete. Now it's time to meet the team. Mr. Swayze, let's give everybody a chance to kind of know who you are, the real Hal Swayze, and why are we here? So let's uh, let's start from day one. Well, that's a lot of pressure on the first one. Thanks, <laughs> It James. is. Wow. Yeah. And, and just want to say, too, having been with one brokerage for a long time and, and joining Jay at Keller Williams, it's been a better relationship than I can imagine. I mean, the culture you have, all the people you attract, you, you guys have done a heck of a job. So we're just... Happy to be a part of that. So, yeah. Thanks, awesome. thanks Jay. Yeah. We're honored then, to have you as yeah. part of the family. And, and then, of course, John Turner I've known since our kids were in elementary school here. And uh, he was the head coach. I was the assistant coach. And he was so much better right. at riling up fifth and sixth grade boys. And um, I, I, I was one of the most inspiring speeches before he played the other Bishop's Peak team in basketball. And now yeah. he's the yeah. Team Swayze coach. Yeah, right, exactly. He's right? the Team Swayze. What he didn't tell you is we got beat that game. <laughs> All I remember is the speech. So Hal, let's talk about you getting into real estate. I started in real estate because I lost my job for, with a real estate developer with no real estate experience, really and got my real estate license. So my first six months in real estate, didn't sell a house. First full year, sold a couple of houses and was starving. My wife at the time wasn't making very much money. I mean, I was very close to, I was interviewing for jobs. I was on the verge of getting out of real estate. And then my third year, you know, things kind of blossomed. And so I, I made a good, really good living that year. So third year in, started to get some momentum. And it's just a process. You know, when you start, you're just trying to figure out how to help people and what to do to sell a house. And, and I forget sometimes how much I've learned. Why'd you stay in it? I, you know, I was 29, had a college degree, I had a corporate sales job in the Bay Area. You know, I got the chance to come back to San Luis Obispo. I'm teaching tennis on the side. I'm going waiting tables and busing tables in the morning at the end of Morro Bay to make bills, you know, pay bills. I was getting in debt. And I remember about August of 1993, so that's two years into it. I go, well, I don't know if this real estate thing's cut out for me. So I take an aptitude test. It was a sales job where you do scanning for stuff at a hardware store, and I didn't know much about technology. And they go, well, you got to take a test. And I'm going, test? I love tests. I used to call it. Yeah, give me the test, right? So I take the test, and I wait a couple of weeks, a week or two, and, and I don't hear anything. So I call the guy back that was kind of the, the one I was in touch with, and I go, hey, you know, how's the job thing looking? He goes, oh, no, I don't, I don't think it's a good fit. I go, really? Why? He goes, well, we got your test results back. And I said, oh, well, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, well, I mean, you're not a fit. I go, what does that mean? Did I fail it? He goes, well, we found out based on your personality, you're disorganized, you lack attention to detail, and you don't take criticism well. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I take criticism well. Who are they? You know, I called my old employer. I was like, yeah. so anyway, I was fortunate enough that I had found like a, a set of Tony Robbins tapes or something. So I'm listening to those. And I was right. just in, starting to get into self-development. And um, he, I remember him saying you could have a life by default or by design. And if I would have got the job, I would have made $2,500 a month, which would have been a good living for me at the time. Right. That's what I'd made before I was in real estate. And I went, okay, let's do this thing. The next year, things started to work out. So I kind of hung in there. I don't know what the analogy is, but the guy on the life raft who's like, how many more days of this do I have? But I, I kind of got through at that point and I was able to pay some bills and make some headway. So mm -hmm. it just takes time for it to start to show. Right. Can I start a restaurant today and be successful in six months? Well, gosh, no. And, and you're starting your own business. 
And there's a huge failure rate in any business, as Jay knows, in real estate as well. Yeah. So I was just fortunate that I was persistent and stayed in there. I think now 31 years in the business, you know, we probably helped over 25, 2,600 families wow. oh. buying or selling homes and a lot of wild experiences in the meantime. Question, uh, talk to us about your athletic career. We grew up in Sun Valley, Idaho, and, and none of my family had gone to college, and I played in a tournament in the summer, and I played a guy against, that was going to Boise State that was highly recruited, and we had a close match, and the For coach... What, what sport? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, tennis, yeah, tennis. tennis. And the coach comes over and goes, hey, you, you know where you're going to college? I go, no. He goes, well, I got a $300 scholarship if you want to come to Boise State, and I was 300 bucks. I am there. So I played about a year in Boise State, and I, I didn't have as much back Round in the sport as some other players. So about a year and a half into it, I wasn't really starting, got a little discouraged. My girlfriend moved away. So I decided to move to California, I actually followed her and then worked for a year and became a resident of California. So I could afford to go to school and forge got back into it because I played tennis. I was able to afford college on my own because I got a good job teaching tennis in the summer. So I was landscaping in the summer and that was tough work, which was fine. But then I played in a tennis tournament with this guy and he says, why don't you come work for me at the tennis club? And I said, that sounds good. Right. So I went back. I played at a junior college. We did pretty well. Came to Cal Poly. Uh, we didn't have scholarships. And then, you know, I was here for two years to play my career and, and finished at Cal Poly. And we won the NCAA National Championships in 86. Do you think that relates with your success in real estate? Yeah, boy, I, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, real estate is a sales job. There's a lot of rejection. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to be able to get over the tough times and, and you talk to and deal with a lot of people before, as Jay, you know, a transaction can happen. Oh, yeah. So I, I find athletes in general are used to that. Swimmers, you know, they got to get up at five in the morning and swim. And not just any athlete because, you know, I was never that talented, but I worked hard. So, you know, I see guys going out for the team and I go, that guy works hard. doesn't matter who kicks him in the teeth. He's coming back the next day. Sports does help. You know, somebody with work experience. It's a tough business. A little bit about your team uh, and uh, JT, if you want to weigh in on this. I know that uh, Team Swayze has this thing called core values. Well, I think it's just making sure that, that we build a team of like-minded people. Our first core value is we're team players. And so if someone exhibits behaviors of not being a team player, they're probably not going to be part of Team Swayze. We have a group of 11 people now. And the beauty of our team and the, the, the reason I show up every day is because I love the people and we're all like-minded and we all subscribe to the three core values, which are first, we're team players. Second, we put our clients' interests above our own. And third, we work really hard to get great results for our clients. You know, when you help somebody buy or sell a house, and Jay, you can speak to this, I mean, it's stressful. It's a huge purchase. It's a huge financial obligation for a lot of people. Or when you're selling, you know, people coming and look at my house. What's the price going to be? All that sort of thing. So it's super stressful. So I always like to have fun. I mean, we'll be joking around, but it really resonates with me is, is we take our work seriously, what we do seriously, but not ourselves. We have office meetings. People are joking around. People are teasing each other, you know. So we have a fun environment because we like what we do. And, and if people are taking themselves too seriously, they're not going to be a good fit for the team. We've attracted really good people because we've determined that that's important to all of us. You know, the, a swimmer's got a lane. He's in his lane, and he's competing against himself. He's got his own goals, his own objectives. And yet at the same time, the entire team is um, going for a points goal. And uh, that's how they get medals. And that's really what I've witnessed in the team that you've got. Everybody yeah. has got their own goals. You guys, you have done a great job of, of, um, of helping them establish what they want for themselves, helping them find their why, and then push towards that. And together, the whole team rises because of it. And that's something that, you know, from the outside, because I've known you for over 20 years when right. we were in a mastermind group together, and seeing you develop from like a, a powerhouse agent as an individual to building a, a very, very strong and powerful team that is by, with no question the most dominating factor in real estate in san luis obispo county it was similar to my sports experience yeah. right i came to cal poly first yeah. year kind of riding the pines a little bit didn't play second year four hot new recruits come in and i came back in from the summer break and and i go oh there goes my chances well two of them flunked out one was irresponsible so i made the lineup we as a team the coach said hey our number one player doesn't show up on time, disrespects people, you know, just not a good example. I'm going to put it to you as a team. Do you, you want him to continue on the team? And we voted him off the team. And later I found out the assistant coach and the coach goes, well, there goes our chance at nationals. We put core values to work there. And then we ended up winning the NCAA championship because everybody stepped up. 
And it's interesting how one person that's not a fit can change the dynamic. So you see that in sports all the time, and it's fun when you can put together a great team like we have here. Hey, James, can, yeah. can I share a perspective about our leader here? Please. You know, Hal's been doing this for, for 30 years, and I, I have the unique position of working with him now. But before I joined the team, I was a client. And between 2011 and 17, I did seven transactions as a client with Hal and his team. You were almost our number one client. You were almost, so close. Almost. You were like one house away, John. <laughs> when I started working with Hal, I realized uh, that Hal, for all the success he's had, being in the business 30 years, is the most coachable, successful person I've ever <clears throat> met. He's, he's very focused and disciplined, and he, he's earned his place in San Luis County's market Absolutely. as a real estate leader. I, I agree. I came here and was going to be here for about six months and go back into retirement. Five yeah. years later, I'm still here because it's so fun right. to yeah. be with this group yeah. of people. And it starts with his leadership yeah. at the top. My next question would be for Jay. Keller Williams has hundreds of great agents. In your opinion, what, why does Hal stand out in San Luis County? To become a licensed real estate agent, you need to take three classes online and pass a state exam. And no other education or acumen is required. And so I think there's a, there's a huge disconnect between the business world and the sales of real estate. And what Hal brings to the party is not only the sales skill uh, through trial and tribulation. I mean, from the beginning of your story, I mean, you got beat up when you first started. Uh, and then you coached and trained and lived through it. And so you earned the sales right, but then you didn't stop there. You brought in the business acumen that took you from a single agent to a single agent with an admin to an admin and buyer's agents and now um, you're bringing in consultants. And I think that's the big difference is, and I think that's what I've witnessed in, in mm -hmm. Hal is going from an agent that is very successful as a salesperson to becoming incredibly successful as a team lead and a business owner. It's from a 10,000 foot view, being able to witness everything, that, that's right. what I would say yeah. is probably my biggest observation. I've been coached since you know my first or second year in the business. Um, the guy who had to close his business before I got my license, my best friend today, right, moved back to Idaho where I knew him from, hands me some tapes. He goes, oh yeah, I was gonna give these to my you know somebody and I didn't, but here you go. And they were a guy named Mike Ferry, who's been training me. Mike's 77 years old, I think. Sorry, Mike, if I got that wrong, if you're here listening. <laughs> but um, you know, he's there and, and taught me from day one and introduced me to great people that we can learn from. And, and he created that environment where, I mean, I pay lots of money every year. I still get coached to this day. We we're on a coaching call with my coach today, right? And I just think if people in any industry, sales, real estate, you name it, continue their out education, because why should it stop when you get a college degree? Yeah. I mean, I mean, how much is, I mean, I got a couple, we all got degrees, whatever, but I mean, how much is that worth? Unless you continue that education, especially today, the way things change, you know, it's so important to learn. Investing in yourself is huge. Just last night, um, there was a, a a news article on mm -hmm. San Luis Obispo County. Mm -hmm. Slow is one of three counties in California with an increase in population. What's happening? You've got unbelievable climate. I mean, you've got beaches, you've got mountains, you have very little traffic. Yeah. You've got great schools, you've got a phenomenal university, you've got wineries. I mean, what, what am I, I mean, you guys all live here. I mean, the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. ocean. kind of nice. Yeah. 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 Ocean with not 60 million people like in yeah. Southern California. Right. They have all the things that we don't. Yeah. yeah, smog. Don't want traffic. Yeah. You yeah, know, exactly. Crime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you don't like, to, I, I hate traffic. No, I mean this place is amazing. What we have to offer is phenomenal. You know, I, I could move, but I know so many great people here. There's very little crime. It's a very supportive community in terms of supporting, you know, children's needs. You know, the community. So, I mean, that's why it's growing. Nationwide, it's gone up because rates have been unbelievably low, right? We've just it's historically low. And so now, because of COVID, forced remote working, and now people found out they can do that. So now we have big city employment and wages in a small town. Absolutely. So how many people pulled up roots, either retired or working, and said, you mean I can do what I do and make what I make and live in San Luis Obispo instead of in a big city? The product we have to sell the community is it's easy. There was a favorable proposition that passed last year that allows people to bring tax bases from anywhere in the state here and, and not have to pay um, like a, a crazy high property taxes. So that's a huge influence. Yep. Um, we've that's also got like the biggest transfer of wealth happening. 
that, that our country's ever seen. Uh, six, close to, or estimated, $65 trillion between the boomers and the, uh, their, their, their parents, and it's trickling downward. So that wealth is being handed to the, you know, the Xers, making San Jose money, and now they've got this windfall of cash. They can bring it here, and, right. and uh, they're working remotely anyway. Why yeah. not live a lifestyle that's worthwhile? So there, there's a, I think there's like a three-prong approach to why our values are so high, why they're staying high, and why I, I don't think they're going down anytime soon. I'm going to date myself a little bit, but uh, when I was in graduate school at Cal Poly in 1977, <laughs> um, I was in McClintock's having a drink with a girlfriend, and uh, we were talking about where we wanted to live, and I said, there's only two places I want to live. One's Maui, and the other is San Luis Obispo. And really, I didn't want to live on Maui. I just wanted to go for a few weeks each year. And so this has always been my number one goal is to live in San Luis Obispo. It took me a few years to get back here. And now I wouldn't go anywhere else. And I think there's a lot of like-minded thinking people in our community. I just want to add to clarify what Jay said, because it's really important. I mean, people, a lot of people didn't know that once you turn 55, you can transfer your lower tax base. And it used to be limited to within the county, and some counties would reciprocate. Now they've expanded that. So once you pass 55, you can take your lower tax base, go buy a property somewhere else. Now, usually it has to be less to move your full tax base, but even you can go up a little bit and your taxes will only go up a little bit. Or if you buy something like you sell in the Bay Area for $2 million and buy here for $1 million, excuse these numbers, but that's what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm, right. And you bought your house for 300000 in Santa Clara and you're paying $3,000 a year in taxes, that you know $1 million house, you don't pay 10000 you just pay your... 3000 a year. There's just a lot of things that have happened to make it easier to move. Talk about prices. Can you give yeah, some statistics so, on that? So around every the county? month we pull them up. And so like price wise, uh, we looked in the South County in Napomo. I think prices on average jumped 20% year over year. So that's a big amount of a jump. Uh, we moved up to Paso. I think, you know, if memory serves me about 25% increase in Paso Robles, Sounds right? About right yeah. in, in San Luis Obispo, about 35%. And it's because there's just not many homes for sale. So we had just so many buyers. You know, this has been a community where we don't have many homes for sale. It's right. just a small place. Right. You know, and people come from the big city and go, well, I want this, this, and this. I go, well, that, that's great, but there might be two of those in the whole town and they're not for sale. So you have to adjust a little bit. Is there ever going to be normal in San Luis Obispo County or around around the United States? I mean, what do, what do you guys think? Depends what you can consider normal. This well, is not normal, right? I get it. Until the supply situation changes and we have new homes, and I was talking about it on my little monthly market update a couple of years ago. It's like, wow, we got 2,000 homes that are going to be built right in San Luis proper, you know, between all these subdivisions. Yeah. That is three years worth of supply worth of sales. You know, that's a big deal. And now it's like, well, where are they? You know, I mean, they built them, but they get gobbled up. Then it's taking longer to build them. Now everything costs more. So it's a different situation. So I don't think the price situation is going to change a lot anytime soon. In fact, you know, if you went back 20, 30 years, every year you bought a house, you would have been glad you did. It was fairly typical 20 years ago, 25 years ago for San Luis Obispo to have a couple hundred houses for sale. I mean, the city of San Luis. Now the county and what's the county today, Hal? About 200? 186. 188 of the year. 186. Well, inventory is, yeah. is at an all-time low. Mm-hmm. We didn't get there overnight. It started kind of back in that bubble burst of 2008. It's taken us over 10 years to get to this position right. of low inventory. It's right. going to take us a, a, a many years, not months, many years to get back to any type of normalcy when it comes to inventory. Right. You know what it is? It is interesting. They're very, very low inventory. Um, but how long is a property on the market before it goes into escrow? Days. Right. The number of properties that will be on the market that will actually transact throughout the year isn't as extreme as we would think because they're turning so fast. That doesn't help those out there looking for a home. Like, I'd like to buy a home. Well, there's only 180 to look at today, and they're all going to be in escrow in 10 days. So right. let's hope there's another 180 that show up. The, the challenge is going to be nobody's going to leave their house if rates go much higher because why am I going to let go of this 3% rate? Exactly. Right yeah. Now I can go buy one and maybe pay a little more than my friend did a year ago in terms of price and, and rates, but if rates adjust down, at least they're in the house. They're appreciating if rates do go down, then they can take advantage of that. People were kind of locked into their homes because of their low property taxes. Yeah. Now that pressure's relieved for those 55 and over a little bit. It's like, oh, I don't have to keep the big house anymore. I can take my low taxes and I can get out of this two-story, five-bedroom and get me a little two-bedroom house. But now, you know, if people are fortunate enough to have bought houses in the low threes, I mean, or less, I mean, that's a pretty attractive rate. Gentlemen, do we have any final thoughts on um, your prices going up in Slow County? 
I, I can honestly say if you track the sales value of homes from the 20s to, to I mean, the 1920s to the 2020s, you'll find a straight line of values going up. We might have some dips, highs, and, but they never go down. It is always a great time to put your money in an asset like real property. Right. Hedges inflation. I mean, yeah. that, that's probably the one thing that I'll, I would impart upon anybody that's even thinking about talking about buying real estate. I mean, when's the best time to buy? Like when, when you need and can afford. Yesterday. Right. Yes, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just add, you know, I mean, we're all proponents of real estate. We've seen it. We look at it a lot. So it's going to sound like this is biased. I don't know a, a time when I looked at real estate and it was just like, oh, that seems like a lot of money. It's always a stretch buying a house. I remember talking to somebody who had a, like a little house they bought in the 70s. They go, oh my gosh, that was, you know, you probably were making money from day one. No, we had to actually, you know, it was a rental property and we had to put money in in the 70s. Yeah, and over time, it worked out great. So it's th this expression they use um, in, in the financial world should apply to real estate as well. I think it's not like trying to time when I get in the market. It's mm -hmm. time spent in the market, Right. right? It's like, when should I be a great golfer? Well, golf every day golf all the time and eventually you're gonna be a great golfer right there's no timing in that you just put the time in same with real estate JT you have anything for us yeah it sounds like we believe in the religion of real estate <laughs> <laughs> but real estate's not a religion just look at the numbers to Jay's point thank you for listening to the house Swayze podcast be sure to subscribe and rate this podcast it comes out every Monday so check for it in your feed for the latest information on the San Luis Obispo County market the Slow County Real Estate with House Swayze podcast is available wherever you get your podcast and on housewayze.com where you can find current listings and other real estate tips. Housewayze.com, that's H A L S W E A S E Y.com. I am James Bueno, Director of Marketing for the House Swayze Group. If you're looking for anything real estate, give us a call 805 781 3750. Al Swayze is a licensed California real estate broker. DRE number 01111911. The Slow County Real Estate with Hal Swayze podcast is a production of AGM Podcasts. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.